Hi, welcome back to Epilepsy Mom. Today we are going to be talking with a new mom that has epilepsy in her life and she'll be telling her story. My name is Summer. And I'm Liz and my daughter has focal epilepsy with focal seizures in her temporal lobe. Hi, my name is Brittany. My daughter has focal epilepsy with partial seizures. So today we're gonna to talk about Brittany's story. I ended up meeting Brittany about four years ago through a client of mine, and we ended up connecting because we had daughters who have epilepsy, and I was still new to the journey, so I needed a little bit of support, and she was semi-new also, so we kind of just leaned on each other quite a bit, um, especially in the beginning. Uh, she was partially the reason why we started traveling to our doctor because she had already started traveling there also. So we actually see the same, not the same doctor, but we go to the same clinic. Um, and it's been the greatest experience. So we get to hear her story and hear what she has to say about her daughter and how this has impacted her life with her family. So Evie was diagnosed with cerebral palsy first. So we already had a lot going on. Um, we were seeing physical therapists, speech therapists. Anyway, so um, I noticed these weird eye spells happening. They were like weird, like her eyes would, it was really fast too. Her eyes would just kind of go like that. And she was about six months old when those first started. Um, and I was telling my husband, they were super quick though, like maybe two seconds. As soon as I would see it happen, if I tried to grab somebody, it was already done. Um, that happened around six months old. And then it wasn't very often. I didn't say anything um, to her pediatrician just because I thought, you know, she was my first child. So I was like, babies do weird things. And it was always after she woke up. Um, well, the more it happened, the more, I guess, unsettled. I was like, this is really, this is off. There's something wrong. Um, and I was already kind of mentioning those things to my husband and my mother-in-law. And they kept saying, Brittany, we're not saying anything. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, we're not saying anything. Anyway, so around this time, we saw our neurologist because she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Um, and I had mentioned that to her and she kind of just waved it off as something called spasmus newtons, which is not related to seizures, which I thought, thinking back now, I feel like that's weird because she should have just asked for an EEG. Anyway, she just kind of waved it off. And so then I started to feel crazy. I was like, okay, this isn't like a big deal. But there was something in my stomach. I was like, this isn't right. This doesn't feel like something that she'll just outgrow. I don't know why. Anyway, I pushed it. I continued to sit it, send these very quick videos to her pediatrician and to her neurologist. And I said, something is really weird. Like something's off. And then finally, and I didn't realize epilepsy was going to be a, a thing for her. Her, even though like she was at higher risk for having cerebral palsy, I was so caught up in the cerebral palsy diagnosis, I didn't even think that seizures would happen for her. And plus seizures in my head were, I was thinking the tonic-clonic. I didn't think that seizures would look so small. Anyway, so I sent it, um, I finally sent a better video, one that you could see the eye deviations a lot clearer and her neurologist finally saw it and was like, okay, let's get an EEG. Well, that happened around, oh, was it 13 months? I want to say she was. And I noticed these from six, like from six months old, I saw something was off and I finally got her neurologist to do something when Evie was around 13 months, but they were happening more often. Also, um, they would happen every single time she would wake up um, from a nap or from in the mornings. Anyway, so got an EEG and then she was diagnosed with epilepsy. So when she was diagnosed with epilepsy, started her on Keppra. And at that time, I already had a trip planned to go visit my mom in Europe. 
So she started Kepra, I think it was like three days before we left for Europe. And I asked her neurologist, like, is it okay that we're, you know, going to a different country right now, like starting on this medication? She's like, oh, she should be fine. This medication is going to, is going to help. You'll probably notice her speech getting better, all these different things. Anyway, so <clears throat> we go to see my mom and her small seizure started turning into drop seizure. So her eyes, so I, the only way I can do it is just shift by showing you. So her eyes would go left and then she would drop. And it started to affect, it was affecting her walking because she was learning how to walk at this point too. So she would be, she would like start walking and then she would like, like brace herself almost and then drop. Like she knew it was coming. She knew it was coming. Yeah. yeah. She wouldn't drop completely to like her knees. Like she wouldn't hit the floor or anything because it would happen so quick. It would be by the time her head went down, I think it was already done. And then she came back up. Um... So I kept messaging her doctor and it was really hard because I was in Europe. So I, I, the only way I could message her was through email. Um, and I said, these are start, these are looking worse. And I was like scoring YouTube for videos of something that looks like my daughter's. I saw drop seizures and I said, she is, I think she's having what's called drop seizures. And it's every single time. I think she was having up to like 30 a day and they would happen in clusters um and with the medication with the medication yeah so her um doctor kept increasing her medicine well maybe we need to increase her medicine well anytime we would mess with that medication increasing and there were a couple times that the doctor even decreased the medication we were there for a month and i was stressing out because they were so bad and they were so scary um because outside like i was scared she was gonna hurt her head um, and then I think she increased the Keppra and then she de decreased the Keppra and they just kept getting worse. So then her doctor said, well, I think what she has is Lennox Gastaut syndrome. And I remember looking it up while I was in Europe because my mom was there and I was with my mom and I just started bawling because, um, that's a scary, scary syndrome to be diagnosed with. And I, um, so then um, I, I wasn't getting along with this neurologist at all. I just didn't feel like I was being heard. Looking back, I know there wasn't a ton that she could have done because I was in a different country, but we just weren't clicking. Um, so then I started to look at other options, different, uh, doctors, different hospitals, and I found a neurologist probably about four hours from us. He would have to travel five hours for the neurologist, but I said, that's fine. I just want to see somebody else. Mind you, I was still in Europe, so I was messaging my doctor my current neurologist, and I said, you know, I would like a second opinion, especially after the Lennox Gastaut syndrome diagnosis that she gave me. I was like, this just doesn't feel right. Um, and so I, they, they started a refer, the referral process and I had an appointment made, obviously when I would get back home. Um, seizures still continued continued on. Her current neurologist said, well, when she gets back, since the seizures have changed, let's get another EEG. Got home in the end of September and had another EEG done in October. And then seizures looked worse. And then she said, yeah, these um, started her on another medication along with the Keppra, which is rufinamide Banzel. Seizures lessened a little bit, but I guess like then my goal was I didn't want any. I didn't, I mean, every parent's goal is they don't want to see any, right? And I, I was like, this can't, like she's still having these every single day. Um, she was having, uh, I think at that point, yeah, it was around 60, 60 to 80. I have them written down somewhere. Um, even with the medications, I think they were decreased to like 30 or something. But still, I mean, as a parent watching your child go th 
through these episodes, like I was, I was barely eating. I was, I was very, very depressed. These were, um, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> these were hard. Like she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Anyway, it's weird because like I can say the story, but like after going back and remembering like how hard it all was, God, it's awful. Anyway. <laughs> You know how yeah. every you know how it, oh, God, I was crying like every day. Yeah. Oh, here comes a drink. Maybe. Hold on. I'm gonna get a tissue. <laughs> okay. Um. So I was depressed. I couldn't eat. I. It was very heavy. Um. Everything just felt very heavy, and I felt like there has to there has to be something to help her somebody else to help her this can't be just her life now the new the new clinic called and we had an appointment set for november 23rd which was a couple days before thanksgiving anyway i was feeling very very hopeful because i had read you know different blogs about this hospital and um how much how great the neurologists were Anyway, we go to that appointment. At this time, um, my daughter was on Keppra and Bansel or Rufetamine. And they I went and met my doctor. Immediately, he looked at her, her um, EEG and heard my story, you know, uh, what I was seeing. And he changed her medication. So he took her off of... The Keppra and switched it to a different medication, Zinesamide. Um, and then we were just going to continue seeing him, emailing him. You know, he was going to be my neurologist or her neurologist from then on. And went home and it was pretty immediate how the seizures just kind of, they, they just kept slowing down. The more we took her off of the Keppra, the more her seizures stopped. I think it was probably three days after like the last dose of Keppra, she didn't have any seizures. She, she was seizure free for, for quite a while. Um, it felt like a while anyway, after seeing her go through seizures really from six months old until, you know, I think she was uh, 16, 17 months. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, from six months old to, you know, before two. So it's been, you know, my daughter's six now. Um, she's had, a, she's on four medications. So, you know, throughout the years, she's had gross spurts. So seizures, she's gone through waves. So I feel like she's gone through waves of where she'll have a lot of seizures. And then we'll go back to seizure freedom for a couple weeks to a, a few months. Um, and we're at the point now, she's on four medications. Our neurologist has talked to us about a brain surgery that could be done that could potentially completely stop her seizures, cure her from seizures. And she has cerebral palsy and that's where the seizures are coming from. It's all on the right side. That's where the scar from her, um, the scar from the cerebral palsy is on the right side. Um, so what they are going to do is they are going to disconnect the right side of her brain. And, you know, she, talking to the neurosurgeon, he said that she will still be able to, like all of his patients that have gone through the surgery have all been able to walk after. So she, her cerebral palsy is very mild. She's able to walk, she's able to jump. Um, and you know it, it affects her left side and so she can't um like hold like when she opens her hand she can't close like hold on to something really tight and she always has to with her right hand hand her things to her left hand so that she's going to be having that surgery in a month a little over yeah about a month so we had talked about you vlogging. Mm. Is that something that you're... Yes. So when 
We had decided, because our neurologist brought the surgery up to us when she was about three, when she was on her third medication. So she is, when she was, yeah, because she's failed quite a few medications and yeah. Anyway, so our, her, her neurologist brought up the surgery and when she, it was about when she was two and a half to three. And we just felt like we weren't ready for that step. That just seemed like such a huge step for us. and. We felt like there had to be other options. Um, like we, we hadn't, there were still other medications that we needed to try to see if that could help. Um, and so now that she's six, we're on four medications and it's, you know, these medications aren't helping for a very long time. Um, so he, we're ready, we're ready to take the surgery step for her. And she's at an age now where these seizures, you know, when she was younger, she noticed them, but they didn't seem to really bother her. It was just like kind of, you know, what would happen to her. Like she didn't seem affected emotionally other than just like being tired. Now she's, you know, six years old and she comes up to me constantly. I'm just, I'm so tired of seizures. And it's really heartbreaking to hear that in to know that there's an option out there that could potentially cure her seizures, even though it's it's a scary option. Um, but I've looked a lot into this surgeon and um, I feel confident that this is going to help her and potentially cure her seizures. Um, anyway, so while I was looking through the surgery, like while I was, I was trying to find information about the surgery, anything for kids, what, what does it look like, you know, during surgery? Like, should I, first, should I bring anything? You know, we have the surgery scheduled. Should I bring anything? You know, what is she going to look like after? Like, what can I expect as a mom? There's not a lot out there. So I plan on, um, I guess, vlogging our experience so that, you know, if there's other parents out there that have this as an option, they can kind of watch our experience and know what to expect if that's the uh, choice that they make for their child or, yeah. And please comment below if your child has had a surgery like this and give Brittany your tips and things that helped you through it. So that she yes, that would be amazing to help her. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that. Anything. <laughs> and right now that it's so strange to because with everything going on with COVID, everything's so different. So I don't know what we can bring from the house. Um, at this point, only my husband and I can be there. And I don't think we can switch out. So I can't have family members come and, you know, my husband will leave after the first week. And then I'm kind of there alone mm -hmm. and I can't have any family members come switch me so that I can, you know, go get a coffee or something. So mm -hmm. yeah, what, what kind of things, you know, um, helped you or helped your child even? Cause I'm one, I'm thinking to myself, like she'll have, I think therapy while she's mm -hmm. there, um, rehab, but is there something that I can bring for her, you know, to help? Maybe her weighted blanket, I was thinking. That might yeah. be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Those are great questions. I hope we can get some answers to help you. Because yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, I wonder if you, you know, after the surgery and as you've logged through it, um, could come back later, you know, like in three months or so. Yeah, or four months because you it's a month from now. So three months after her surgery, you just kind of come back and explain how things went and mm -hmm. let us know almost like is. a follow up. Yeah, where she is at yeah. that point. And yeah, definitely. Yeah, it'd be it's great to have an update. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really hope everything goes well with the surgery and we are going to go ahead and say goodbye and then we will do a Q&A with Brittany. So we'll have our next video. You guys will get to hear questions and answers with her. Your story is not over. Your story is just begun. <laughs>